Not sure if we are much closer to understand the ESCOM rescue plan today. What the president did do, he said, uh, obliged, I suppose, to, he spent some time kicking into touch allegations that he'd collaborated with the security branch during apartheid. He addressed other SONA issues, but the majority of the time was spent talking about ESCOM without making any specific financial commitments. His hospital passed that to the finance minister for budget next week. While restructuring ESCOM won't solve the immediate electricity supply crisis, it will position the company to more effectively meet the country's energy needs into the future. It will also help us in simplifying management, but more importantly, it will also enable funders to better assess the risk and opportunity and open space for new investment in generation capacity on an urgent basis. And that is absolutely critical. It's providing the clarity to funders into the future who are going to, we're going to ask to pour money into ESCOM. And certainly it's going to be interesting to see how we convince them to do that without breaking your household uh, balance sheet forever. How much money will funders expect to get in return for their putting money into South Africa's broken power grid? Let's talk to Dr. Adrian Saville. He's the uh, chief executive at Canon Asset Managers. He is an economist of many years' experience. Yeah, um, the president did indicate a bailout, which will be announced in the budget, but you know, it does feel like sticking a, a Band-Aid on uh, a big broken limb, Adrian Saville. <laughs> I think that's exactly it, Bruce. Um, uh, I think it, uh, this is about stitching and patching. Uh, what, for all intents and purposes, is uh, a, a very grand risk to the country. Um, and Eskim is, is, is troubled deeply on, on at least three fronts. Uh, uh, operationally, uh, most obviously, <laughs> your comments about the traffic. Um, uh, financially, uh, where the balance sheet is deeply stressed, and uh, I would venture a third, which hasn't really received quite the airtime I think uh, it, uh, it it deserves, and that is that it is technologically um, off the pace. Uh, if you look at the energy generation uh, from South Africa, almost all of our coal, uh, almost all of our uh, electricity energy is is coal based. And you know, next closest to us are countries like China and India, who are sitting at 60, 70 percent coal generation. So we are, I think, not just a decade off uh, in terms of generation, we're a decade off in terms of technological uh, iteration or evolution. Uh, that's because we took uh, 80 billion rand per power station in Mudupi and Kusile for a quick fix to our 2008 power crisis. We spent that and then we spent five times more and they don't work. And they are, you know, they, they are badly built and they're badly designed. That's what the uh-huh. well, that's what the public enterprises minister told us this week, which leaves us nothing in the kitty to catch up, which is deadly serious. You know, Bruce, the big spend uh, we shouldn't be so uh, we shouldn't be too surprised about, and I don't think we should be too scathing about it. Uh, it is certainly not uh, unique uh, or particular to South Africa to put down a first number when you've got a big project uh, kicking off, and then as the project rolls out, invariably uh, two things happen with these grand-scale infrastructure spend. Uh, the first is the number goes up, and the second is the date goes out. Uh, that is almost, I think that's about as universal as you can get <laughs> in terms of project uh, design and delivery. No, that's absolutely fine. When one, one comes to terms, no matter whether it's a home renovation or whether it's a, a power station, uh, but you do expect the project manager um, to be keeping an eye on the costs and to make making sure that the that the that that the the power station in this particular case is delivered as close to budget and as close to on time as possible, and the work that is done is done to specification. And if not, then Agreed. they have failed in their project management, and that's what's happened here. Agreed. And, it is, and, and it's your last point. It's about the, it's about the, uh, the generation and the delivery of uh, what was the paid-for capacity uh, that both of these uh, very, very big project spends, which were supposed to shift us and deal with the next decade uh, of energy certainty, uh, both of them are delivering at 50% of, uh, of the design.
Yeah, and and I mean, and that, and look, there's nothing we can do about it now. <laughs> now we've got to play catch up, and the uh, and and the bond and the currency markets for the first time getting a little bit edgy. There's a sense mm. of nervousness. Um, the the president hinting that the finance minister will make an announcement in the budget next week. We've got legacy systems with an average plant life of 37 years. What we've done since uh, 2008, badly built, too expensive. Um, government admitting ESCOM boards and government oversight has failed. Somehow we've got to look forward to find the fix. And I'm not sure that the fix yeah. is apparent yet. So strap yourself in for a reconstruction bond or uh, uh, a uh, reconstruction tax levy uh, because the money simply isn't there. Uh, if you look at the strain that has been placed on the budget over the last decade of very, very anemic economic growth uh, and increasingly strained spending, we really don't have the capacity at uh, central government level to either take money from one pot and put it into this desperately needed uh, uh, finance uh, bucket uh, or uh, to cut uh, spending. That would be in, a, in, in an election year, uh, and it's almost unthinkable. So I'm intrigued uh, as to where they're going to find uh, the funding for this in a very short space of time. Um, and it's not important. It's absolutely critical uh, that this is fixed because the economy is heavily uh, energy intensive. We, we run one of the most intensive energy economies uh, of all uh, middle income and advanced countries globally. And unfortunately, some opposition parties and some trade unions don't seem to grasp the seriousness of the situation, looking to preserve what they regard as 10,000 vulnerable jobs at ESCOM at the expense of a, an electricity grid and expense of an entire economy. It, it's f- foolhardy, um, I think is about the most polite way I can put it. Yeah, look, I think, you know, Bruce, if something is going to galvanize a nation and give, a, give our country a, a purpose, the last time we had something like this was around uh, the World Cup, you know, making sure that everything sort of pulled together and was delivered uh, on budget, in shape, and uh, presented a, 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 your earlier term, world-class face to the world. Uh, here is uh, a, a key call uh, to this country in all sectors of, of the economy, uh, financial sector, uh, the public sector, um, the private sector generally, unions uh, to collectively uh, come together to, to work on the solution. Absent uh, electricity and you have a real economic crisis at the moment, uh, you know, I think it would be child's play compared to what could uh, potentially roll out. It is really uh, uh, worrying single country risk. If you are Moody's and you are coming to South Africa or you're doing your desktop analysis, whatever it is, however you're going to assess South Africa, the odds of you retaining South Africa's investment grade rating is the last ratings agency to have South Africa's foreign debt on an investment grade. What do you do in March? Do you downgrade? Do you go, you guys are lovely. We trust you. We'll give you more time. You're beginning to look a bit silly if you keep doing that, aren't you? Mm -hmm. I, I desperately wish that um, <laughs> another obvious answer came came to my head you know, in response to your observation or thought came to my head. But South Africa has been given a very, very generous runway. We have been given the benefit of the doubt for an extremely long time. Uh, economic growth is off the pace. Uh, competitiveness is falling. Our share of world export market is sluggish. Per capita incomes have stalled for, for the last 10 years. And all of the headline numbers and the beneath the headline numbers uh, point to to a worrying picture. Um, if ever there was a time that it is no more talk, uh, get into action, deliver, uh, and get these big promises into real delivery. That time is now. And if we do get a downgrade, and it seems, I don't know, say it's likely, but it's possible mm. that Moody's runs out of patience and just goes, you know what, guys, we've tried. We've given you the rope. You've hung yourselves. Um, you're on your own now. What is the consequence of that? In part, uh, it's, it's going to make Eskim's problem even bigger because a downgrade would, would, would translate into uh, higher government bond yields and Eskim's borrowing cost is linked to the government uh, government bond yield. So Eskim, who would be desperately looking for 
funding would now be going and looking for funding at even higher rates of uh, rates of borrowing. I suspect that that's already in the price uh, to some extent, but that's an immediate uh, implication: is that uh, this uh, borrowing behemoth would uh, would be in the market trying to borrow in an environment in which you've just been given a downgrade on your on your credit status. Uh, it, it really is worrying. Dr. Adrian Savile, thank you. From Canon Asset Managers, not wanting to over-egg the pudding on this thing. I really don't. I would love to find, rather than the cloud, the silver lining. But it is increasingly difficult to do as we don't have the clarity from ESCOM as to what sort of handle it has got on the short-term crisis. There was some diesel delivered to ports, but then there was a problem with offloading the diesel because of some contractual concerns. And uh, is that diesel going to be used for generators? If so, are those generators going to be able to run to plug the short-term crisis? And as we have another cabinet committee designed to try to find a way out of the problem, are we not just continuing to beat on exactly the same doors we've been beating on for over a decade now, not getting any real progress? Beginning to you know, run out of options and time as uh, ratings agencies like Moody's, who have given us the, the benefit of the doubt for as long as they have, when other ratings agencies have lost patience, when hopes that they will continue uh, to give us the benefit of the doubt. But you can hardly blame them if they don't. 